Um, the tech world was at ConnectJS 2014. Um, since that time, I have been teaching myself to code. And as a newbie, um, I've seen, I've needed, my peers have needed, we've all been in a place where we wanted mentors, people have wanted, I've never, first of all, let me say, I've never been in a community as open and sharing as this development community. I come from education. No one gives away information and time as, um, as easily and as generously as you guys do. So I commend you on that. What I find is there's a lot of frustration when people who desire a mentor or who need a mentee come together um, and the outcomes aren't what they want. So what, that's what we're going to talk about, overcoming the challenges of mentoring. Success, successful mentoring doesn't just happen, it has to be planned. So what I'm doing is, although I am new to um, tech, I have years of experience working with learners of all ages. I've worked with um, five-year-olds to 80-something. I've taught, I'm a certified special needs teacher, I've taught GED, I've taught, um, um, I have a master's in training and development, so I've done curriculums for people who work with young people outside of school time. So I've dealt with a gamut of um, learners, the abilities, skills, and everything, and ages. And so one of the main things, something's going on right there. So one of the main things that um, I've done in my life is mentor, is and train people on how to work with, uh, with other learners. So we've seen this before. This is just pulled up how many jobs there are out there. Um, there are tons of um, development jobs out there. And this was just on uh, Indeed one day. I just, um, and this is just in this area. The challenge, though, is getting people over the hump from self-taught, boot camp, even um, people who have CS degrees, getting them over the hump from when that education stops or when they, till getting that first job. There is a big crevasse, there's a big gap. And although there are a lot of jobs, get, to get us over that hump, we need help. And there are people who want to help us, but there, um, it's difficult by trying to figure out what that mentee needs, how to get them to be junior developer level. And it's affecting businesses. Um, I am a researcher by heart, so um, the business costs associated with uh, corporate uh, training, corporate hiring leaders' inability to recruit, that's one, and retain, that's another. So you spend a lot, recruiting people are spending a lot of money recruiting, and then they're losing them, so they're spending, they can't retain them. So they're spending just a lot of money getting this talent in. And it has to change because as we know, somebody at home right now is developing another business, another tech business, and they'll need other, some more developers. So it's, it's like there's this ongoing need, but how do we get people leveled up to where they can do these jobs? And 89% um, of organizational leaders um, stated that they're having difficulties filling these, open, um, these basic <coughs> open positions. So I um, want to make sure I'm aware of time. Quickly, I'll go through. There are four quadrants of mentoring for me. This is how I see it. And, and it's the difference between professional and personal and adult and youth. When you're dealing with youth, it's all about the young person. Um, and you can, deal, you can be dealing with grades, pregnancy, parents. You can be dealing with all that kind of stuff when you're dealing with a young person. But it's about them. And it's open-ended. When you're dealing with adults, there's usually a plan. They usually have a goal. There's something they want to accomplish. So there's a difference. And then there's a difference between personal. Um, when, when it's a personal mentoring relationship, it, you become like family. Um, it's, 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 the lines are very much blurred. Professional, it's their specific goals and objectives. I may not know who your mother is. I may not care who your mother is. We are working on something specific. So that's what we'll be focusing on, the, 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 where adult and professional mentoring come together. So what mentoring is not? Mentoring is not slack. Mentoring is not stack overflow. Mentoring is not those one-shot things. Those things are great when a newbie is stuck and they're trying to get a problem answered, but that's not what mentoring is. Mentoring is not casual. Maybe I'll do it, maybe I don't. I found, I have, sometimes I want slack, 
and somebody's helping, my, um, helping me, and all of a sudden they just go away. I don't know if they died or what. They just stop answering the question. It's like I'm stats, like I don't know what happened. Um, and it's not static, it evolves. Mentoring is, it's a relationship. And like with any good relationship, it takes time and commitment and effort to make it work. It's personal, you have to have a connection. If you don't like your mentee or your mentor, it's not gonna work. Who wants to work with somebody they don't like? Um, it's a commitment. And it's um, personally transformational for both individuals. And that's another difference between professional, um, well, adult and youth. I can be put in the role of mentor and mentee at the same time. The factors that for effective mentorship is um, mentors really need to evaluate their motivation. Why do you want to mentor? And then you really need to take an uh, assess, uh, honest assessment of your time, your talent, and your temperament. Just because you know something does not mean you're good at explaining something to someone. As I was saying to someone earlier, Toby is one of the best people to explain. He, if you, he hits you here and you don't get it, he knows how to back it up to where it is at your level. And then he brings you back up, which, oh my God, I now know the difference between dot notation and bracket notation. I was like, yes, because every time I ask someone, they keep saying, oh, it's the same except for something else. And then you try it, it doesn't work. Um, so you have to be really realistic about goals. And for a uh, mentee, because it's a, it has to be reciprocity, this person is giving you your time. And you have to respect their relationship, and you have to have identified um, desired goals. And I put uh, set realistic goals for mentors, because mentees have no idea what a realistic goal is in this industry. I am done trying to figure out what a realistic goal is. If I want to be a doctor, I know step one, step two, step three, even in education. I went at it differently. Um, I didn't get an education degree because my background, though, I knew I had qualifications, and I was able to take this test, da 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 Everybody comes at this different, differently, and how I think I might get there as a developer just may not be realistic. And it's, it's incumbent upon that mentor to help mentees come up with um, realistic goals. The reason why we need development, um, mentoring and development is the industry needs a better, do, a better job at recruiting and retaining the numbers of new developers to fill current and future positions. Newbies find it hard to, to level up on our own. We, we just, it's just hard to jump over from a boot camp, videos, whatever, to getting that first job. Um, learning to code is hard, and without someone giving you a re reality check, newbies begin to think that it's impossible and they just quit. So if, for people like me who've come to, most people haven't, aren't like me where I just said, you know what, I'm not going back. And so what, if they find it difficult, they go back to their old, their old lives. And so that's not some, and so they really may think, I can't do it, and that might not be it. They can do it, they just didn't have the support that they needed. Um, and again, as I said, there's no clearly defined path. So um, one, of the assess, one of the things that is the beginning of a great mentoring relationship is for you to cast yourself in the role of a mentor, if you, that's what you want to be, or a mentee. And do a self-assessment. Come up with three personal strengths and three challenges that um, you bring to the table in that role. So if you're a mentor, my three strengths may be, if I'm doing an honor, I mean, it has to be an honest self-assessment. I'm good at Googling. Um, I, 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 I work hard or, and I'm, 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 I'm passionate about the work. Uh, a challenge may be, as a mentor, I don't have the time. Um, I don't understand how to level somebody up, even though I might desire to do it. I don't know if I, I know how to do that. And um, my wife just had a baby. And so I'm just all over the place. So those are honest assessments. And so one of the questions that I get, and I'll close with this, is, um, people often ask, how, what's the best approach in, in 10 minutes I really can't get into deeply? But if someone wants to really have a productive mentoring mentor role, project-based learning is it. We're used to, in development, working on projects. So if, um, if you have a mentor, mentee, and they come to you with, they say they want to be a web developer, well, you know the skills it takes to be a web developer. So you start them, and you're also assessing their skills. You start them with a project that deals with HTML, CSS. 
and see how well they do there. If, they're, if they accomplish that, then you level up to the next thing that, you, that would get them to be an uh, effective web developer. If not, you back up. Projects have, um, and you have deadlines, you set goals and objectives, you have to have those um, so that every person, in the, both people in the relationship um, have something to measure. And that's the thing that makes um, mentoring challenging if you don't have that because it can go on forever. People don't know how to exit out of it. It becomes uncomfortable. Um, and so with these outlined goals and objectives and deadlines, people know up front what they're getting into. Thank you.